Hey guys, what is up? It is Clay. Welcome to another video. Today I wanted to talk about what I think is like the main challenge of the INFJ personality. Like if there was an Achilles heel for INFJs, what would it be? And I think it comes down to the top two cognitive functions in the stack, and they almost contradict each other a little bit. So first of all, I should say, you know, this is all my own opinion. This isn't peer-reviewed research or anything like that. It's sort of my observations and my own experience about struggling um, with this issue. So the top function of the INFJ personality is introverted intuition. The second cognitive function is extroverted feeling. And a healthy INFJ will use both these functions collectively together to kind of move through life in a healthy way. Um, of course, there's the other cognitive functions as well, the third being introverted thinking and the fourth being extroverted sensing. And then, of course, there are other functions below in the stack. So what is introverted intuition? I've talked about it before in other videos. I think to a lot of people, it's a bit of a mysterious process, especially to people who don't have introverted intuition. INFJs and INTJs have this as the dominant function. So it's sort of an intuitive, natural way that we kind of process information. Um, it's internal to our minds. So there's a lot of theories, thoughts, enjoys looking at perspectives and kind of tinkering with possibilities. And Introvert intuition is very good at sort of putting together these puzzles. So you have pieces and you might be collecting information for a long time, but eventually you can kind of put this puzzle together and see the picture clearly. And it kind of helps people with introverted intuition to move forward really strongly towards these goals that they set up. And introverted intuition also kind of, it almost like eliminates distractions. I think to a lot of people, Introverted intuition almost seems a little like these theories kind of come out of nowhere. And sometimes people with introverted intuition can't really explain their intuition that well. And that's where the introverted thinking, that's the third cognitive function in the INFJ stack. If INFJs are able to use their introverted thinking to actually prove or bolster their, their theories, then I think it can be a really nice combo because you can appear quite wise. I think that's really what introverted intuition kind of comes off as when it's healthy, is you can kind of appear like a pretty wise person. You can see things that other people can't see. It's sort of a, almost like a clairvoyant type thing, but obviously it's not. That's just how some people view it. Like, how did you know that, right? So INFJs are generally naturally observant. So you can sit there and observe, you know, it's often observing people, right? And you see the things that people are doing, you pick up on the little things they're saying, and all of a sudden you can come to these conclusions and you're not really sure, but you kind of know it to be true, right? So the second cognitive function is extroverted feeling. And whereas introverted intuition is really focused on what I want, like, it's inside of me, it's what I'm doing, it's what I'm thinking, it's where I'm going, it's, it's all these plans and goals that I have, what I want to accomplish. Extroverted feeling suddenly is focused more on the feelings of others. And it's, I think if I had to boil extroverted feeling down into sort of one descriptor, it would be trying to give other people good experiences. So it's obsessed with the experience of others. Like you have somebody over for dinner, you're making them a meal, let's say, you want them to really enjoy that meal. You want them to be happy. You want them to feel good, feel accepted, feel understood. And I think that's why a lot of INFJs are quite good at sitting and listening to people and offering like a deep level of understanding, acceptance, and making people feel heard. That is the extroverted feeling. So I think the downside of extroverted feeling is that sometimes it's almost like you become a bit of a people pleaser. And I've talked about that in these videos before, but it's like you want people's experience to be good so bad that you actually sacrifice your own well-being to allow these people to feel better. So I think that's why when an INFJ is unhealthy, you know, narcissistic people 
can take advantage of INFJs. And I think that's why it seems like a lot of INFJs that I've, I've heard from often have some narcissists in their life they've been taken advantage of. I think that's because of that extroverted feeling really wants other people to feel good. And then once people are feeling good, we feel good. And that's what the extroverted feeling is. It's almost like you would take on the feelings of others. So in my opinion, I think INFJs have this war going on inside of them. And it is the war between the introverted intuition and the extroverted feeling. And it, in a way, it's just this giant contradiction. How can you value your own path deeply while also being obsessed with the experience and needs and wants of others? So what is the Achilles heel of the INFJ? I think the Achilles heel is living within this contradiction. If you have people in your life that want things for you that you don't want, or are doing things that go against your values, or people that aren't honoring you, they're not attempting to accept you, understand you, or make you feel heard, you end up in this super awkward situation do I sacrifice myself and help them? Or do I honor myself and make them unhappy, I guess? And they might not be fully satisfied with the experience you're giving them anymore. So I think that some INFJs almost lose themselves inside of this. And if the two things are at odds and contradicting each other, one of them kind of has to win. And I think that some INFJs almost go all extroverted feeling. They push their intuition down and it's almost like they lose themselves. They don't even know who they are anymore. They kind of end up in these communities, friend groups, situations where they're living out somebody else's values. They're living out somebody else's path. And I think that is a really dangerous place for an INFJ to end up because I think that will lead to depression. I think. If you are living for somebody else, but yet your introverted intuition is conflicted in that, I don't really see a healthy way uh, to live within that state. So here's something that's kind of funny, something that I've noticed, is that people kind of can see me in one of two extremes. It doesn't really ever seem to fall in the middle, which is weird because these two extremes are completely opposite of each other. So as an example, somebody I just met the other day told a friend of mine that, wow, he's, he's like a really chill, calm person. And I was like, huh, interesting. Because I've got other friends and other people in my life that think I am super intense. So on one hand, I've got people that think I'm super intense. On the other hand, I've got people that think I'm really chill and calm. And I think it comes back to the same issue. If my introverted intuition and my extroverted feeling aren't put at odds against each other, I am calm, I am at peace. But if those two things are forced to challenge each other, I, it, it sort of ignites this fire in me, I guess you could say. And I will start to argue or I will start to change the situation. I will try to change the situation so that my intuition and my feeling kind of more align again, right? Like let's say, and I think it comes out most when people are judging me. So if somebody comes along and says, you're not doing the right thing, you're doing a bad job, you are, you know, you need to get your act together and start doing this instead. You are on a dark path, sir. That kind of triggers this side of me where I now start to explain myself or try to change their mind or justify it. And then when that happens, I go into like full analytical mode and it becomes sort of like a debate, right? And you know, I don't, I don't mind debating with people. I actually kind of enjoy it sometimes. I find it intellectually stimulating. But I've noticed that certain people really hate debating and they actually will almost take it as an attack. If you're trying to debate with them, they take it really personally. So anyway, I think that's where that INFJ intensity comes from. So somebody can meet us and we're super chill, 
Um, we might even be really friendly. We might be in like full extroverted feeling mode, trying to make these people feel good. And they're like, wow, this person makes me feel really good. I feel so, but then if that person then turns around at some point and criticizes us and we think it's justified, well, I mean, that's the thing, right? If it's justified, then I think having the self-awareness to realize that and be like, you know, maybe I'm missing the mark here. Maybe I'm thinking about this incorrectly. Maybe I was too critical. Maybe I need to apologize. Then that is a very healthy thing. However, if you think that somebody is unjustly accusing you of something, then you can kind of flip the switch into this intensity mode. My main challenge in life is keeping that extroverted feeling in check. That really is my, my Achilles heel. And so when, I, when I'm talking about the Achilles heel of the INFJ here, I'm really talking about myself. It's this war between the two functions. And so I'm always subduing my extroverted feeling. I'm always trying to keep it down. It's like this, this dragon that keeps coming out. And I'm like, no, 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 don't, don't do that. Honor yourself boundaries, right? Like let's say you have a really needy friend who's going through a really rough time and you want to help them, right? That's really good. But if that sort of becomes almost like a bit of a toxic situation where you're just absorbing their negativity and their negative feelings and their, their sadness, and it, if you don't have boundaries to kind of keep that in check, as an IFJ, you'll just take that on and almost become that. You know, I've heard from other people um, that talk about INFJ stuff, that INFJs can be like social chameleons. So we can kind of become like whatever anybody wants us to be, right? I think part of having proper boundaries to, is to prevent that from happening. To kind of, you know, stay true to yourself. You know, don't let that in. You know, push that away. But help people in a, in a healthy way that still protects yourself. All right, so INFJs have this problem. I think that's pretty apparent. I think any INFJ, this is probably gonna be a, a prominent theme in their life. It's about setting up healthy boundaries and then identifying new threats and new issues and constantly adjusting these boundaries as you go through your life to kind of remain a strong, healthy person. So the other day, I read a comment, and I apologize, I don't remember who it was now, I could probably look it up, but it was, or maybe it was a message that somebody sent me, but he was asking, you know, how do you resist all this input? Essentially, that's what he was asking. He was talking about, you know, current events, and the news, and things like that, and things that are happening in the world, and how do you, how do you stop that from, like, coming on to you and affecting you as a person and almost invoking that guilt that you're not helping enough, that you're not doing anything about it, that you're not sort of creating something, some kind of system to kind of further the world towards an ideal place. I think this goes back to the same problem. So extroverted intuition, I think, can be like a one-on-one -on -one thing with individual people. You take on their feelings, but I think it can also be large groups of people. It can be social media. It can be like general unrest in the world. Like you're sitting there and you're watching the news and you're, you're on Twitter. I'm guilty of this. I go on Twitter and you just, like during all the protests, for example, and there's all these atrocious things happening and it's easy, I think, for people with extroverted feeling to kind of take that on and just feel like it's hopeless, the world is a complete disaster, it's never gonna get better, um, there's no way to fix this, look at all this pain, look at all these hurting people, how can I possibly have sort of help this situation? I think that's an example of kind of runaway extroverted feeling, and it's something that I've had to work on. So a number of years ago, maybe 10 years ago now, I actually made a rule that I wasn't gonna read the news anymore. And so at this point in my life, I've kind of got to a point where I will read it a little bit. Like if, if there's something big going on, I will go and read about it a little bit. But I really try hard. I don't go to CNN.com. I don't go, well, I live in Canada, so there's other Canadian news sources. Like, I, I, at one point I actually blocked them from my web browser, so I couldn't even type it in. 
and there's actually this uh, browser extension that I used to use it's called Stay Focused, and you can actually block certain websites. So I actually used that, like, and that, and I needed that because without it, I just was gravitating towards these things, right? I would recommend, as an INFJ, to truly, truly try to limit that input. And I think that can really go a long way to improve our lives. Or anybody with extroverted feeling. ESFJs, dominant extroverted feeling. Like, I almost feel bad for ESFJs. Like, I, I, mean, I don't know for sure, but I think that if, it, if this is bad for an INFJ being, it's not even the dominant function, I, I think that ESFJs are probably really susceptible to this as well. But yeah, I don't read the news. I especially don't read political news. I try really hard, and actually for a while there, I, uh, I have another extension on my browsers for Twitter, Facebook, where it actually can block posts that are about certain topics. So for a while, I blocked the word Trump. So I did not get any piece of news, I did not get any tweet, any Facebook post that mentioned the word Trump. Because it's like, I don't need that in my life. It, it's just, there's so much negativity in politics, so much bickering, so much fighting. I think as an INFJ, you don't need that in your life. So I think that's a, that's a healthy boundary that I've put up. It's like to limit news, to limit political stuff especially. And I don't want to talk about it with people either. Like when they start talking about politics and start criticizing this party or this, you know, sometimes I'll engage a little bit, but I really try not to uh, take it to heart, I guess. You know, the thing about social media, and I think it's especially tricky for the people with extroverted feeling like INFJs, I don't think that our minds were designed to deal with this much information coming at us all day long. Like, let's say you go back a couple thousand years. You know, people might have been living on farms. We all lived in these small communities. You know, once in a while you get some news from the outside world. Even a hundred years ago, you know, they had, you know, one newspaper. And then by the time you read the stuff in the newspaper back then, like let's say, the, you know, it's like 1890 right now, you know, this stuff already might be a week old. So I almost wonder if that it adds a little level of detachment. It's like, oh, this happened in the past. Whereas the way that we have to deal with it today, it's, it's current. It's like it's happening right now. This, this happened 10 minutes ago. It's on Twitter. Hey, I just saw this police officer beat this guy into the ground. As an extroverted feeler, you immediately feel that. You feel the pain of this person who just got beat into the ground, you see the injustice of it, um, or, or whatever side of the issue that you stand on. Maybe, maybe you feel the pain of the other, other party, whatever. I mean, you can feel the, the pain of both parties at the same time. I think that's the problem with extroverted feeling as well. Here's two people fighting and you feel bad for both of them. You kind of feel like saying, you guys don't need to fight here. Like, we can work this out. You're actually both completely missing the mark on this issue. So to recap, what is the Achilles heel of the INFJ? I think it is managing what you want and your path versus the wants and needs of others. And I think in order to be a healthy INFJ, you have to honor yourself first. You can help all these people, you can provide them good experiences, try to do all this, this stuff, but you can't You can't put that above your own intuition and your own path. You have to be willing to let go of people, to admit people aren't right, to, you have to be okay with people not liking you. You have to be okay with people being a little bit miffed at you. They're like, oh, this person, like let's say you don't do exactly what somebody wanted you to do because you didn't think it was right and now they're mad at you. And let's say they're telling a few people about it too. You have to be okay with that. It is something that I have immensely struggled with my whole life. I do feel like I'm getting a handle on it the last few years. And now, you know, somebody can be upset at me. It doesn't really bother me anymore. If you wanna learn more about that, go watch my people pleaser video. So the way to deal with this Achilles heel 
and sort of fix the problem, stop the pattern, is boundaries, like I've said. You have to set up healthy boundaries. But in order to set up boundaries, you first of all have to find the, the self-assurance to do so, the self-worth to do so. You have to know deep inside of you that you are correct. I think a lot of INFJs end up super insecure and they start to wonder if they're crazy. I've done it. I used to say either everybody's crazy or I'm crazy. That's what I used to say all through my 20s. Either everybody else is crazy or I am crazy. And I started to actually think that I was crazy. You have to trust that you are not crazy. And I can say that right now. If you're an INFJ, you are not crazy. You are different, that is for sure. Um, and you have to realize that you are not the norm. People are not going to get you if you are being yourself. And the trick is to manage that. Walk through life, still be kind to people, try to be understanding. And it's really about learning how to communicate in sort of less controversial ways. I think a lot of INFJs, because we're direct speakers, and sometimes we can just blurt these things out and kind of catch people off guard. How can you build your own confidence so that you can trust yourself? You have to get somebody else that can mirror that back to you. If you're the type of person that has like a strong parent in your life, that can actually mirror those things back to you and say, you are not crazy, what you are thinking is accurate. That is awesome. But not everybody has that. Um, counselors can be really great for this. I go to a counselor and I feel like that is the main thing that she has done for me. It's like all this talking, all this working through issues. The main thing that she has done for me is tell me, you're not crazy. You are thinking clear on this topic. That other person is being manipulative. That person is being, uh, they're not making any sense. What you're saying here does make sense. You know, as an INFJ, the problem is if you've got 10 people telling you that you, you're incorrect on something, you, it takes a lot of confidence to basically trust yourself. And you know, my main issue is I kind of came from the Christian community. I ended up getting separated about a year ago um, due to a whole bunch of stuff that went on. And I had a lot of people against me, a lot of people. And at first I was a complete disaster. Um, and I couldn't sort that out. I couldn't, I couldn't differentiate between other people's opinions of me and my own self-worth. And I think, I mean, I don't, I hope this isn't the only way to get over it, but it's almost like you have to go through something like that. You have to go through a situation where a lot of people intensely don't like you in order, in order to find your way. I don't know. I've, I've actually started to wonder. A lot of us want to be liked so badly. We want to have good reputations. We want everybody to appreciate us. But my question lately is, if you're doing that, can you really do that thing that you need to do? Because guaranteed, if you're an INFJ, if you're doing that thing that you need to do, it's going to be different than the thing that everybody wants from you. I just don't think it's possible for both those things to coexist. And that is the Achilles heel. And it's almost like if you're an INFJ and everybody is happy with you, you're probably doing the wrong thing. And I've, I've even started to wonder lately if maybe it's better to have a low standing in society. People don't like you. People think you're a little crazy because then at least at that point, you're not doing things to uphold this image. Like celebrities, I almost feel bad for them. It's not something that I would want to be because you've got this image you're trying to maintain it, and it's so fragile. Your self-worth is wrapped up in this image that other people are holding. 
And you see it all over the place lately, like somebody screws up and all of a sudden their entire reputation is destroyed and then as a result they are destroyed because their self-worth is wrapped up in their reputation. And I don't think it should be. Your self-worth should be separate. And so that is the two things, right? Introverted intuition and the extroverted feeling to separate these two things. It's kind of funny in a way how one of the greatest strengths of an INFJ is extroverted feeling. Incredibly caring, incredibly intuitive. You can spot problems and issues in other people that they can't even see themselves. And if you work on your delivery, um, then you can communicate those things to people, right? But then on the other hand, a runaway extroverted feeling can be such a negative. And I think that's why on these videos, that's why I'm always talking about it, because I think for me, it has been a huge challenge and something I've had to rein in. You know, I think I've had some, some issues, some things have happened to me in my life that kind of built some patterns and I'm, I'm trying to break out of those, those patterns. And that's what these videos are all about. I make them to explain my own thoughts and it seems like if it helps other people along the way, then great. But one thing I don't want to do about these videos is that, you know, I've already found it. I've already been tempted by it. It's like, well, what do other people want to watch? What do other people want to hear from me? I should do that. And it's the wrong thing to do. These videos were a bit of an experiment. If I do exactly what I want, if I just talk about what I want to talk about, does anybody care? And it's interesting, there are a few people who care. And I'm not trying to make this for anybody else. I'm making it for myself. So it's all part of the experiment. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Put your questions and comments below. Subscribe if you want to hear more from me in the future. All right, thanks. See ya.